Yo, what is up guys? Now that we finally have the cage in the car, that means that we can start moving into the next steps, which is going to be the seat and the harness, which is what we're going to be addressing in this video, more specifically the harness. What we need to do for the harness though, is we need to get it set up properly for us. And I have gone out and got myself this guy right here. And this is a Sparco harness. It's a six point harness. So that means I have six points of contact. But this is the belt here, it's just black. It does come with the eye bolts necessary to mount it, but Sparco doesn't like giving you mounting hardware, or any hardware for that matter. So this might be the right hardware to mount it, but there was no bolts, no washers, or no nuts and no washers for these things. So it's just the eye bolts, but luckily, I have nuts and washers, so that's not gonna be too much of an issue. Now here's what Sparco's instructions say about mounting the harness. You've got to have about zero to 20 degrees on the rear. Here you can have 70 degrees, plus or minus 10, and then you have 60 degrees plus or minus 10 here. Um, but more or less, yeah, I'm gonna stick within that that 40-ish uh, degrees range for me when I install mine. And then underneath for the anti-submarining belts, you've got zero to 20 degrees range there. Now in regards to these belts here, it also addresses them in this section here where it shows you the proper mounting where it's either flush or it's out about 20 degrees, or 25 degrees I believe, sorry. So it can be back 25 degrees, or it can be forward 25 degrees, or it can be straight even with this. In the case of mine, I'm going to actually be having them close to flush uh, in that 20, minus 25 degree range that it's allowed to be in. Now obviously I'm going to be running my shoulder belts on my shoulder rail here for the roll bar. Um, if, you're not ha if you don't have a roll bar and you're doing this, which I highly don't recommend doing at all, you should have protection in the car if you're going to be running a harness. And if you choose not to mount it on the roll bar, or you don't have a roll bar though, don't mount it directly down to the floor. You mount it back to the back seats in that area, kind of closer to the C pillar. Because if it's here and you get in an accident, the harness is going to pull down on your spine and it's going to compress it. I'm obviously going to wrap mine on the bar. That's the recommended way to do it. In regards to the ones on the floor, this is where one of my anti-submarine belt points is going to go. Um, one of them is going to go there. So I've marked it. I've set up the seat just to kind of get an idea of where my, my angles are. As for the other two, the other anti submarine is going to go here, but I haven't marked it. And the other um, shoulder one, or waist one, is going to go back there. I know that's a safe place to drill. I know that's a safe place to drill. There's nothing underneath. But this whole channel right here, that's brake lines. I'm going to drill these two holes here, and then I'm going to go underneath, and I'm going to go straight across, and I'm going to find the spot that's safe to drill there, and I'm going to drill there, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to go straight across to somewhere in here, which I do believe it's more or less center, but somewhere in here, and then drill up. Now this will be the case for most of them, but this is a half inch drill bit and that's about what I'm going to need for these. Okay, now with both of those installed, I have to go into the car now and basically line these up with the next ones. But as you can see there, that's what I was talking about with the brake lines. The brake lines here kind of more or less run right through the center of that section. And I can't really move anything more this way. I want to line it up. So I'm going to have to run it through more or less the center of these brake lines right here. Uh, but the only way to do that safely and ensure I don't break anything is to drill it from underneath. Well, I was able to get both of those drilled no problem. I uh, was not able to fit the full half inch drill bit underneath the car coming up. So I had to do a 3 8 coming up and then I came on top and did the one half to open up the holes a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint the holes like I did on the ones for the roll bar so that they don't rust. And then we'll come back and we'll actually install these with the nuts and the washers. I've kinda got it mocked up in the way that's supposed to go. I want these ones mounted like this for where they're gonna clip in. And then these two I want mounted like this for how they're gonna clip in. 
to keep the belts the way that they're supposed to be. So what we need to do now is I need to get some crush washers on these guys and then I need to put a large washer on the back side of it so that it has more surface area and then tighten it down with a nut. So I've got to do that to all four. I am going to have to trim up the washer because this space is too narrow for the washer. So I'm going to trim up the nib washer for that one. Then I'm going to put washers on all four or all three of those. Okay, now I've got all the eye bolts in there. They're pretty sturdy, they ain't going anywhere. It's also time to move into this bar. Um, but in order to get the one for this bar mounted properly, it's probably best I have the seat in place. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna clip in these ones, and then we're gonna reinstall the seat. And then we're going to go ahead and fit these ones up so that they're proper in position as well. First off though, because we do finally have the seat back in, we can run these guys through the little holes into the center for me. Now with those guys there, it's time for the anti-submarining belt, which is just under here. Boom. And that is the anti-submarining belt. We are going to have to adjust the length on that quite a bit because uh, yeah, I don't, I don't sit that high. It needs to be a lot lower, but we'll adjust the length on that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and crack into getting these on. Okay, so I'll show you how I do it more or less on this one right here. As you can see, I've already done this one for the other side. Uh, you can see about where the Sparco logo is. That's about where I've decided to have it down. This is actually a little bit higher than I originally adjusted for, but it kind of moved um, through all the tightening process. But it should be fine, because as long as the Sparco logo is not coming through here, um, I know it's not too high, um, but on this one I'll show you what I did. I ran this guy all the way up. Find that sweet spot. Get more forward. Okay, and then this was with the webbing <clears throat> underneath. And then I ran the web from underneath the strap up through here, through this one, right down through here, and then I came back one more time through the back loop here with it. Then I just pull it tight tight as you can get it right there and then it'll kind of sit more or less like that as you can see this one came up a little bit too so they're more or less about even now and then of course you have all this excess now this isn't the only way to do it uh, this is just the way that I'm doing it you can also do a different type of wrap that I find a little bit trickier to do so I just did this one but they both should work about the same because all it's doing is making sure that the straps on here and then this back bracket part or this back part of the bracket if this were to get pulled up on, this holds the back part of the bracket. So there's no real danger with any of them um, coming undone as long as you do a official proper one and you wrap it up tight, you shouldn't have an issue of it uh, coming undone on you. But with this excess, I'm going to do the standard zip tie technique. And there you have it. I'm going to cut off this little excess here in a second, but I'm going to wrap up the other one real quick first. So now I just have to adjust the anti-submarining belt. It adjusts the same way as the lap belts do uh, and there's just a little bit right there it's the same also as the shoulder belts do so you just pull that but unfortunately it's under the seat so i'm going to go ahead and reach down there pull that a lot tighter so that it doesn't sit up about chest level which is currently where it's trying to sit for me so i'm going to bring that down to a comfortable appropriate level 
And then that should more or less be the install for this. Okay, I pulled it out to make my life a little bit easier just because uh, it was being a little bit tricky to try and adjust it in there. Um, but it does actually look like it's wrapped a little bit differently than the other belts are. So I've just got to adjust the overall length on this. It's wrapped very similarly to the roll bar mount. I'm thinking this will be more or less a good length right here. Buckle to buckle. So I'm going to adjust the other one to that. I'll put it back in. If it's not, then I can always just take it out and readjust it again. So I finally adjusted the anti-submarining belt to a point where it is comfortable on me. And then I made sure to adjust both of my waist belts so that they were also comfortable on me. So now they are both comfortable. Those are comfortable. They always were. And then that's now comfortable. So the whole harness now fits me. It took a lot of tweaking. I had to adjust that, I think, about three times to get it to where I wanted it to. Uh, this system right here is a little bit different. This one just pulls. It's very similar to this system right here. Um, I was wrong to think that that one was the same. That one is very similar to how I have these wrapped, um, but down lower. But I think that just about does it for the harness install. Uh, it is definitely really late, and I think it's about 9.30 or so at night, and I haven't had dinner because I needed to get this done on time. So all I've got left to do is get the car back on the ground, get the wheels on it, and then get it packed for tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned. There's a lot more that needs to be done to the car, especially now that I'm thinking uh, I'm going to need a steering wheel after I got that seat installed. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.